You do not want to miss this episode. We're going to talk about goals, how to properly set and meet your goals. We're not talking about New Year's resolutions that go, go by the wayside by January 7th. We're going to dig into goals, help you plan your year. Let's jump into it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Control and Compound with Darren Mitchell. I'm your host, and joining me as always is Christina Wyatt. Christina, how are you today? Hey, Darren. I'm doing great. Excited to start this year off on the right foot with uh, this goals discussion. But before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, um, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, you're going to want to hit that five-star review and subscribe. And if you're listening on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out. Excellent. Thanks, Christina. So uh, we're going to talk about goal setting and how to properly set goals today. And uh, we're going to use uh, the, the, the SMART method, and we're going to break that down for you guys, and we're going to add some, uh, some twists to it. Uh, so, Christina, you are probably, of everyone I've, I've, I, I know, you're probably the best at setting goals and hitting those goals, and, you know, your success speaks for itself. So what is a SMART goal and uh, what, do, what does SMART stand for? Yeah, so I, I love goal setting. And thank you, Darren. That's very nice. I, I love goal setting. I like planning. I'm a planner. Um, and goals work really well with planning, right? A goal without a plan is just a dream. So we really, and I love my planning, so goals and that work very well together. Um, the SMART idea, that's not that's not mine, but everything it stands for, um, it makes sense to me. So I like kind of following it, having a conversation from there. And SMART really stands for, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So those are the things you got to check all those boxes to make sure that the goal, um, you know, the goal is achievable at the end of the day. You want to make sure it fits all of those things. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, you know, I, I don't know the stats on how many people reach their, reach the goals they set at the beginning of the year, but I'm, I want to guess it's a lot closer to zero than a hundred. Um, so let's, let's break down each, each one of those. Cause this, this is a, I think a great, Great, great starting point to start setting your goals. So, okay, first one, S, specific. What's a, what, what, what do you mean by specific and what's, a, what's an example we can use on a specific goal as opposed to what, a vague goal that most people use? Yeah, so specific is very important um, because, you know, you really need to get into the nitty gritty when you set your goals, when you kind of blanket it and you say, I'm going to hit my sales targets for this year. Well, what, what does that look like? What does that mean? The same thing with, you know, I want a a better work-life balance. What, what is that? That is not something that you can achieve. You need to set, you know, almost like micro goals is what I would call them or forming habits is another way people will look at it, but you want to hit smaller goals that, that, you know, get towards that big goal. So say we're looking at that work-life balance. Well, something that you could put in place there is, you know, I want to go to yoga once per week. That is something that puts you towards that bigger goal, but it breaks it down to how you're going to achieve it. So those micro goals create the, you know, the larger big picture of hitting that larger target. So you really have to be specific and you have to, you know, look at, uh, they say like what, where, who, how, you know, that, you know, go back to that, that, uh, very basic look at it and say, how am I going to get there? And what are the smaller tasks that are going to get me to that goal? So really nitty gritty, like down to the bottom line of how you're going to be able to do this, not just big picture. Cause big picture is, you know, it, it really is a dream. It's like, I want to do that, but how are we going to do that? And that's why you need to get more specific. I want to be rich. I want to be super fit. I want to be beautiful. Like, yeah, we need specific, specific goals. Uh, love it. Okay, the next one's measurable or M. What are we talking about for measurable? So measurable is really tracking your progress, right? How do we know we even achieve the goal if we have not tracked it? And how do we make sure that we're staying on, you know, pace with hitting that goal, especially for large, like full year goals, right? You really want to break them down into quarters on how you're going to achieve them. And you want to be, you want to make sure that you're tracking at least per quarter. Like that is minimum. You want to go and you want to look and say, listen, am I on pace to hit where I'm supposed to be? Um, with those sales goals and making, or if it's sales goals or whatever it is that you're working on, have I gone to the gym three times a week? Have I done those things, those micro goals that I said I was going to do? I need to put a timeline on them and I really need to make a deadline, right? Deadlines are huge. If you have no deadline, it's never going to happen. It's like human nature. If you say that something needs to be done in uh, three days, the 
most people are going to get it done the afternoon of day three. If you say it's 30 days, afternoon, 30 days, that's when it's getting done, right? So those timelines are super important um, to keep you on track to make sure that you are going to accomplish it in the time needed. You do not want to wait until fourth quarter and be like, oh yeah, I got to get back to that goal and get it all done because you are out of time at that point, right? I, I love it. A little mention there, Parkinson's Law from the Nelson Nash uh, Becoming Your Own Banker book. You know, time will expand to fill. If you give someone a 30-day de- deadline, they do it on day 29. You give them a seven-day deadline, they do it on s- day six. Same thing happens for us. So so I love that. Measurable. Okay, I'm going to do, you know, X amount of this. What's my quarter? What's my month? What's my week? And, you know, if it's a fitness thing, well, great. You get to run three times a week, every week for the quarter, and then you're going to build up your miles, and then you're going to run a 10K, a a half marathon, a marathon, whatever, but specific. So every week you can kind of check your progress because typically people set goals, and then the next year they go, oh, I should set some goals again, and and the goals they set last year are are gone. So, uh, So I love the measurable. The next one is attainable. Uh, what do we, what do we want to address for attainable? Well, this really comes down to setting goals that you can achieve, right? It's, it's a lot of people say shoot for the stars and I get that you do really want to make sure that that goal is, you know, it's a big goal that you want to set, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're able to get there. So is this goal possible? And when looking at that, you really want to break down, do I have the resources to hit this goal, right? That's a big one because if you set yourself a huge, um, uh, sales goal, maybe, and you don't have the leads coming in or you don't have the resources, you don't have the sales, uh, software that you need to do. It. If you don't have the resources to do it, you're not going to be able to achieve that goal. And if you don't achieve, you know, you can really lose self-confidence, which is not going to help with anything at, at the end of the day, right? You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure when you set these goals up at the very beginning. So before you get going, you don't want to find this out second quarter. You want to, when you set the goal, do I have what is needed in place in order to hit that goal or hit that target? Perfect. Okay. Then we've got uh, relevant relevant. So that one is, you know, it's important, especially when you're working, um, in more of a group. So this is, you know, it it is important to your own goals as well, but is this goal relevant to what I am doing? Does it make sense in the overall picture to have this goal as something that we want to achieve and working in a team, having a relevant goal is essential because if your team members don't re- don't don't understand what they're working towards like how do i fit into this overall goal it's not going to become a passion for them they're not going to want to hit that goal because really what does this goal have to do with me right this is not part of mine um my overall plan so it needs to be relevant and it needs to be relevant to everyone working on it um working on that goal to hit the target Thanks for listening so far. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and leave a review and subscribe. And if you are interested in learning more, please visit our website at controlandcompound.com to sign up for a free education session with one of our wealth coaches. Love it. And then the last one is uh, timely or timing. Timing. So you want to set realistic um, timelines for your goals and you want to, again, go back to, you know, that measurable, you want realistic time. So, you know, if it's going to take six months to do, and one of those ones is definitely like health, health is, health is a huge one, right? You can't say that you're going to hit your goals in three weeks. It's not possible, but you need, well, maybe it is possible, you know, start it, form your habit in three weeks. Um, but to hit, you know, um, weight loss goals and, you know, to be able to run a marathon, that's not going to happen in three weeks. So you need to set your timing and you need to make sure that you're tracking that timing. So let's say you set a goal that you know for sure is going to take six months. It's very important that at three months, you're 50% towards that target, right? Because if you're not 50% there, then you're not on track and your timing is not. And and at that point, it is okay to go back and revise goals, right? If you need to make changes, that's okay. That's the whole point of staying, um, you know, staying on time and uh, measuring things is to be able to make sure things are on track too, because not everything goes exactly as we want it, but making sure that we have that timing, those deadlines, the the measurable um, moments, all of those things really pulls the plan together. Yeah, we, we, we mentioned running a couple times because, uh, you know, I, 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 I ran a marathon years ago and I, I, I've seen how people train and stuff. And I mean, it's, it's very, uh, very specific when, when, when you're training for something like that. It's like, here's the, here's the race date. I need to be at this many miles. I need to 
to get to that many miles, I need to have a long run every day or every week. I need to run X amount per week. And then it really breaks it down per week. But the same strategy should be in every aspect of your life. You've got the end goal. Now let's break it down. Let's do the specific. Is it attainable? Are you going to run a marathon in two weeks if you're not a runner? No. Um, so those really uh, attainable goals. Um, so great, great review of that, Christina. So let's have a little conversation about that. And um Let's talk about uh, something Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach calls big, hairy, audacious goals. Um, So a lot of these goals, when you're setting these goals, a lot of them are personal goals that you can set for yourself. But when we start talking about massive goals, big goals, uh, one of the one of the books that I'd encourage people to check out is um, Who Not How uh, by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And we, we've implemented that in, uh, in in our business, and one of the things I love about it is, okay, if you have this huge goal, it's like, okay, we want to have this much, whatever it is you want to do, well, then you go, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to achieve that. I can't, I can't work 48 hours a day, um, so I'm not going to achieve that goal. So then it gets into, well, who do, do you need to achieve that goal? It's like, okay, well, we're going to need three more people to do this, two more people to do that. And when you start thinking about the who, then you can really focus on some really bigger goals. If you want to 5X or 10X your business, you just can't do it by working harder. You need to bring in that who. And and oftentimes people think of that as as an expense and, and really a who is an investment. If you bring on another staff member and they produce more than you're paying them, uh, you know, I remember... 15, 16 years ago when I first became an advisor, I left like I left a big job and I started my own business and I uh, had an income of zero there for the first while and, you know, two young kids. Um, and it was really tough for me to go hire my first assistant because I didn't have a lot of money at the time and it was like, wow, that's an expense. But But I was spending so much time doing admin stuff that I wasn't doing what I was great at. So then it turned into a who. So it was, okay, I need, to, if I w- really want to grow this business, I'm going to need a who right from the, right from the get go to say, okay, all that stuff that I shouldn't be doing, let's put that off. So again, paying for that administrative assistant years ago, paid for itself 10 times over because it freed me up to do the stuff that I was good at. And so, so many times people get stuck on, they're not willing to, to invest in themselves or their business they're they're trying to do it all themselves and that's fine for your personal goals but if you have big big goals you're going to have to really look at the who how do we accomplish this if you want to start a website and a and a podcasting and and do all this stuff well you're not going to be able to do that for yourself and we did that Christina you know we interviewed a bunch of firms we said we want to start a podcast and it was like well we could do it and we could edit it and we could do that and we're like we'll never get to that well like, we just don't have the time so we went out and we we paid a firm to do our podcast and we paid a firm to do our ads. We paid a firm to do our social media posts. And 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 that who is really the investment that allows allows the business to grow. So, you know, if you got those big goals and you don't think they're attainable, then you really got to focus on the who, who can I get in there to to make those goals attainable? 100% Darren, you're absolutely right. Like looking around and seeing or, you know, making the plan and seeing who you need to incorporate into the overall planning is essential because it's not always just going to be you, especially when growing a business and looking at business goals. There's going to be a team around you and having those open conversations as well is so important to make sure that, you know, everybody's on board to want to be able to do and achieve these goals and that you are also accountable. So getting, uh, you know, hiring a business coach, that's a big one. We talk Talk about that as an investment in yourself and that is huge for accomplishing these goals it's going to you know it, it's going to give you a, a lot of accountability because you're going to be working with this business coach and it's also going to allow you you know you need that team a lot of and we talk about that a lot too you know wealthy individuals have a team of people that focus and do what they do best like I am not a bookkeeper in any means you know what I mean so book for me to spend a day on bookkeeping is crazy that doesn't make any sense there's people out there that are extremely good at it and they do it very very well so why wouldn't you have them on your team to take that off your plate so you can focus on the things that you do well which creates that overall picture to hitting that goal at the end of the year when it comes to those business goals right 
Yeah, well, I, I didn't know if you were talking about me in that ex- <laughs> example because, uh, you know, to give a, give a little inside scoop, um, Darren was doing payroll for Control and Compound for, for years, and uh, I hated it. And, and, and every time it was payday to get all that stuff together and pay everyone and just remember to submit the taxes and do it, like, it, it just wasn't what I should be doing with my time. And... Uh, and eventually, I finally, uh, last year, you know, bit the bullet and, and, and invested a little bit of time and hired a firm to, to manage payroll. And uh, I got to tell you, the, the, the stress that that removed every, every payday for me was just, just incredible. But it was, it was just getting that who. It was like, wh- why am I doing this? There's people that are experts at this, that they, they can do that, and I can focus on what I do. Same goes for real estate. Like, you just can't sit there not never being a real estate investor before and say, I want to own five properties. Okay, well, no, you need specific goals. And then it's like, okay, what? who's going to help you get there? Is it a real estate coach? Is it joining a real estate group? Is it a real estate-focused mortgage broker, real estate-focused uh, uh, real estate agent? Like, you need that team to help you accomplish those goals. Because if you try to do everything on your own, um, it's going to be really hard to hit, hit those goals. So don't be afraid to, you know, find someone who's an infinite banking specialist, find someone who's a real estate expert, find, find a mentor. It's really the who's that are going to help you, um, uh, hit your goals. And then when there's someone else involved, you're more held so much more accountable. If, if you're, talking to a business coach every week or you you've whatever it is you you decide that that person to bring in now you're accountable to someone else and and I think that's really important I know in, in, for me when I'm accountable to someone else it's like oh crap I got to make sure I get this done you're accountable to yourself sometimes you know oh I got to do this instead or that instead but you know book it in your calendar make a plan and, and don't look at it every 6 months look at it at weekly monthly check your progress all the way along and find out if you're not hitting your goals, maybe ask the question, who can help me hit my goals? Do I need to bring in an expert for podcasting, for sales? Do I need more staff? Do I need a coach? Whatever it is, focus on the who as well as, you know, your personal goals. 100%. No, I love that. Excellent. So again, we could we could talk for hours on goal setting, but you know, Google Smart Goals. It's a, there's all kinds of great re- resources out there. Check out the Who Not How book. Um, set your goals. Love your feedback uh, on the podcast. What you guys think of goal setting? What's worked for you? What wasn't hasn't worked for you? Uh, and any other uh, tidbits? We'd uh, we'd love to hear back from the listeners. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to this podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. And if you want more information, check out our website, controlandcompound.com, and you can sign up for an education session with one of our wealth coaches.